Hey guys, what's up? My name is Evan Schneider and welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna to talk about my top five features in DaVinci Resolve. It was so hard to come up with just five features because there's so many features in DaVinci Resolve that I wanna talk about. They have a significant impact on your overall workflow and your efficiency in getting your color grade done. Now, I've been using DaVinci Resolve for years now as a colorist. When I first started using it, I was only using it for color grading. However, over the years, as they have improved the editing features, I've started to use it more for my complete workflow from editing to color grading to delivering, and it's become a really powerful program. The incredible part of this is that you can actually download DaVinci Resolve for free. There is a studio version for $299. However, most of the features that you're really gonna use on a day-to-day -day basis are in the free version. And all the features that I'm going to be talking about in this video are also available in the free version. So you can download it and get started doing these types of things right away. Now these features that I'm talking about are also specific to DaVinci Resolve. So you're not gonna find these in Premiere Pro or Final Cut. These features are things that might convince you to switch to at least color grading in DaVinci Resolve and possibly even editing in it as well. Okay, so one of the first things that you're gonna notice when you begin to color grade in DaVinci Resolve is that it's designed around a node-based workflow. And that's actually my first top favorite feature of DaVinci Resolve. Now, this can be confusing and a little bit overwhelming at first when you're not used to using nodes, but over time, as you get more comfortable with it, you're gonna realize that it is an incredibly powerful and versatile way to think about your color grading process. Now there's so many benefits to using nodes that it's hard to wrap it up in a quick video. However, some of the benefits of using nodes are that instead of in Premiere Pro where you have to create multiple instances of the Lumetri color effect to be able to control the order of which your image is being processed, you can do all of that by using nodes in DaVinci Resolve and you can even switch them around. You can copy one specific node to another. You can label them. You can organize it however makes sense to you. You can easily see in what order your image is being processed. The other incredible part about using nodes in DaVinci Resolve is that there are multiple types of nodes. You can add serial nodes, which are just basically one after another, but then there's a whole other set of parallel nodes, parallel mixers, layer nodes, outside nodes. You can pass alpha channels through different nodes. There are so many possibilities and so many ways to set up your color grade that it really opens up possibilities that aren't possible in Premiere Pro or Final Cut X. But the use of nodes leads me to my second favorite feature, which is power grades. Now, say you created a beautiful node structure, everything is labeled, everything is perfectly set, and say you wanna use it on another project or you wanna copy and paste it to another clip. Now in DaVinci Resolve, there are multiple ways to copy one grade on a clip to another clip. And I actually made a video of all the different ways that you can check out. However, when you grab a still in DaVinci Resolve and put it in your gallery, you can access all of the nodes attached to that still. Now, the beautiful part about this is that you can actually take that still and drag and drop it into one of your power grades. Now, what you can do with your power grades is that you can actually access those power grades within any project in your DaVinci Resolve database. So if you create a node structure template and you save it to a still and then you put it in your power grades, you can actually access that on another project and you can always improve them, you can always adjust them and then just save it as a new power grade. Now this saves an impressive amount of time because you don't have to start from scratch for every project and you can create different looks, you can create simple structures and so you can really take advantage of using that node-based workflow and saving it to a power grade, kind of just like a preset. My first two favorite features were mostly workflow based, which I'm a huge nerd about. But my third favorite feature is actually based on the image processing, and that is the use of the contrast and pivot tools. Now, most editing or color grading programs are going to have a contrast slider. You'll see it in Premiere or Final Cut. 
but the contrast slider in DaVinci Resolve works a little bit differently and it has the addition of another slider called Pivot. The contrast and pivot sliders are an insanely powerful tool just in themselves. When you use the contrast slider, instead of just doing a basic contrast by moving the white and black point to other levels, it's actually creating an S curve in your contrast that you can adjust and intensify. The benefit of using an S curve is that it compresses your highlights and shadows so that you're not clipping them, but you're just pushing them closer to the top and bottom. So you're retaining all of that detail instead of blowing it out of proportion. And this is where the pivot slider comes into play. The pivot slider actually moves the midpoint of your S curve from top to bottom so that basically you can decide how much of the highlights or how much of the shadows you want to compress. Now this can be an incredible tool to either save highlights and bring them down or bring up shadows or just be able to really finely adjust the contrast structure of your image. And you can do this without having to touch any sort of custom curves and you can do it much faster, especially if you have some sort of control surface mapped out to those two different parameters that you can actually adjust at the same time. I use these tools all the time when I'm grading log footage as a log to linear conversion, but I also use it just as a way to quickly create contrast and quickly adjust it and kind of have an overall level of contrast within my project. My fourth favorite feature of DaVinci Resolve is pretty basic. It's the color wheels and the offset wheel. Now, this is another feature that is basically included in Premiere Pro and Final Cut, but I know that in Premiere Pro, I hate using the color wheels. It is the last tool I wanna use. It feels really clunky and slow, and I never really get the results that I want from them. However, in DaVinci Resolve, the primaries wheels and the offset function are some of the main tools that I use and they're one of the best ways to grade and balance an image. The lift gamma gain primary wheels correlate to shadows, midtones, and highlights and you can adjust each one separately. So say I want to only affect the midtones in my image and warm them up while I'm cooling off the shadows and highlights, I can adjust those three wheels to create a really natural and really good color contrast in my image or say my highlights have sort of a green cast, I can easily push those highlights toward magenta. There's so many different options and this is really one of the basic ways that color grading should be done. The offset function is an incredible tool for color grading log footage. This yields incredibly natural results. If you're interested in more information about how to color grade log footage, you can check my video above. I'll link to that as well. Now my fifth and final favorite feature of DaVinci Resolve is the stabilization and window tracking tool. All of us have used Warp Stabilizer in Premiere Pro, and while it works incredibly and does an amazing job, it is so slow. I don't know about you, but I've spent hours waiting for a clip to analyze. The stabilizer in DaVinci Resolve I would say is 95% as good as Warp Stabilizer in Premiere. However, I would say it's two to three times faster at processing the image. I haven't done any scientific tests, but whenever I analyze the image in DaVinci Resolve, the tracking features are so advanced that it literally flies through the clip. It doesn't require any extra processing and I can play back that clip instantly without any delay. It's an incredible tool and it's come a long way over the years. They're constantly improving it. And I think it's finally getting close to using Warp Stabilizer in Premiere. The other tool that is great is the window tracking feature, which is basically you can create a power window on your footage. Say I wanted to brighten up my face or add a little saturation. I can actually just track my face no matter where it moves, it'll track my face and it knows exactly how to figure out which way it's facing and how to make that window lock on perfectly. Anything you need to track, DaVinci Resolve is an incredible tool to make those fine adjustments and to make your image really stand out. So yeah, those are my top five features in DaVinci Resolve. Even if you still wanna edit in Premiere Pro, 
there are really easy ways to bring your project over from Premiere into DaVinci Resolve to color, but I would highly recommend, if you haven't jumped into DaVinci Resolve yet, I would highly recommend downloading that free version and trying some of these features out for yourself. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'm curious what your favorite features of DaVinci Resolve are. Leave a comment down below, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content like this, and I will see you guys in the next one.